It is October 6, 2018. My name is Jim Romano, being joined by legendary Pittsburgh athlete, Mr. Paul Atwood. And tonight, here at Rise, we have a double feature presentation. That's right, Jim. Tonight, not only do we have our grand champion, but we have the return of Brandon K to take on David Lowe in a lumberjack match. This man that we're seeing right here is coming off the biggest win of his career last month here at Rise. It was Drake Braddock playing the role of the comeback kid after a crushing defeat. He rebounded, he rejuvenated, and he defeated the mammoth folk nasty. But can Drake Braddock build on that gigantic win because tonight he is in there with a very aggressive young man named Zach Thomas who looks to make his own foothold here in Rise Wrestling at the Stronghold. That's right. Not only, not only did Drake Braddock pick up the win against Falk Nasty, but let's face it, that was probably the biggest body slam since Andre the Giant was slammed by Hulk Hogan. And what do we have going on here with BC Steel coming up? Now, speaking of, uh, of Bulk Nasty and that slam, Paul, we saw on our social media, Rise Facebook pages and the uh, Rise Twitter page as well, Bulk Nasty, after being defeated by Drake Braddock, that shocking upset, it was Bulk Nasty that fired BC Steel, kicked him to the curb. Now, BC Steel is a devious mind. Could he be scouting some talent out here? Or is he just trying to be a thorn in Drake Braddock's side? Because let's face it, Drake Braddock cost him his meal ticket. Certainly, is this a business opportunity? Or is uh, BC Steel out for revenge? Which we've seen, he's a very vindictive man. We've seen him uh, try to do that on a number of occasions. The same way we're seeing Drake Braddock and Zach Thomas exchanging holds here. And that's the aggressive side of Zach Thomas I was talking about, just those elbow shots right to the ear. Oh, this man is definitely, he's a vicious competitor. He's, he, he can catch his catch can, but he can also knock your teeth down your throat. Absolutely. Zach Thomas, a student, a protege of one Ricky Shane Page, one of the most accomplished independent stars of the past decade. And you can see how that aggressiveness has translated with the game of Zach Thomas. But as we've said, Drake Braddock coming in here with as much momentum as anybody after that upset of Bulk Nasty. Oh, there's no doubt Drake Braddock's on top of the world right now. And he's also on top of Zach Thomas. That's true, too. Some mind games from Drake Braddock, but... Uh, well, this man's a combat veteran. He can get in your head very easily. Yeah, psychological warfare may be... Uh, in the Zach Thomas wheelhouse because we know Zach Thomas is uh, a little on edge all the time. Up and over goes the bullet catcher. And that's one thing that we know from Drake Braddock. He brings the technique of that mixed martial arts background, but he also can fly as we saw right there. Oh, without a doubt. Hand-to-hand -hand combat and aerial tactics all rolled up into one. Perhaps this could be a case of uh, Drake Braddock just trying to find himself, really coming to his own as, as his career progresses. We're really seeing the evolution of Drake Braddock as an athlete here at Rise. That's true. To, to, to date, his career has been a little up and down. He's not really been able to get a lot of momentum, but he's playing big off of that big win off of Bulk Nasty last month right here at the Stronghold, and hopefully he can gain some momentum off of it. Man, big knockdown center ring. Thomas using his body as a weapon, just hurling himself at Drake Braddock. That's where the size advantage comes into play, but come on now, you're not going to pin a man like Drake Braddock. You're not going not gonna to pin a war veteran that way either. Arms trapped and vicious cross faces here. And look at the transitions from textbook. Zach Thomas. Absolutely textbook. 
not only does he have aggression, he brings controlled aggression. Everything that Thomas does is with malice and intent, like dropping those knees and elbows right to the base of the neck. That is no coincidence. That is not by accident. Oh, no, there's, you've got to, you, when you can control that rage the way that Zach Thomas does, that's what makes you a vicious competitor. That's what makes you a dangerous man. And you can hear the shots. Vicious body shots in the corner. Big fall away slam. And you want to talk about potential. You want to talk about upside. That is Zach Thomas 100%. We could be seeing the early stages of a future superstar here at Rise Wrestling. This man definitely has the background. He definitely has the technique. He has the talent. Now, can he use all that and put it together, string some wins together? I don't press that. here. Only a two count. And we talked about the malice of Zach Thomas. If you notice, Paul, on that pinfall attempt, he used the kneecap right in the side of the face of Drake Braddock. That's it. Not only pin the man, but let the man know you're there. And we're seeing BC Steel exit stage left here. Unbelievable talent, gentlemen. Unbelievable talent. Thank you. Oh, oh, he's talking about the ring. guys in the ring. Sorry. Wait a minute. Thomas has Braddock caught and drops him right on the back of his neck. Beautiful bridge. Two and a half. Well, clearly we've got our answer. BC Steel was obviously out here scouting these two guys. Well, let's face it. The weasel needs some extra money in his pocket. I told you, he lost his meal ticket in Bulk Nasty. And, you know, this guy, uh, I'm sure his pocket's hurting a little bit. Yeah, BC Steel has a PhD in exploitation. And again, just driving the knees into the ribs. Using those ropes as weapons to set it up, too. Beautiful overhead exploder suplex. Yes, and again, people may look at Zach Thomas and say the guy's a little bit crazy. He's a little bit out of control. He's got a lot of rage inside of him. But he can control those emotions. He can control that rage. And in essence, he can control the way the match goes. You know, Paul, some may be unaware. Zach Thomas um, grew up without any family life whatsoever. He's really been a lone wolf for the majority of his life. Beautiful spine buster. Everything that Zach Thomas has accomplished, he's had to do it by himself. And let's, let, let's look at it this way, too. For a while, he ran with the Cobra brothers, and they turned their back on him. Five this guy minutes, has, gone by. This guy has had minutes. nobody in his corner his whole life, and that's put a gigantic chip on this man's shoulder. Absolutely. And with the knee firmly planted into the shoulder blades is where you're going to see Thomas just twist and contort the arms. Not only stretching those muscles, but he could pop those joints out of place at the same time. But we know the trademark fight of the board catcher, Drake Braddock. This crowd's trying to get behind him right now. Is that going to be enough? Series of mule kicks. Beautiful counter from Braddock. Spike Zach Thomas on the top of his head. But we're at a virtual stalemate here. The first man of their feet will have a definitive advantage in the conclusion of this contest. Without a doubt, Zach Thomas is taking a lot out of Drake Braddock. And again, the size differential could be coming into factor now. Those impact blows on a, on a smaller man like Drake Braddock by a man a little bigger than him. He's got to be taking its toll at this point. And you can literally see how evenly matched these two athletes are. They're both back up. But a beautiful sidekick from Braddock has the advantage. Patella shot nicely done. Innovative offense from the martial arts expert. And you can hear the impact. You can see the head snap back of Zach Thomas. You can see his jaw actually move out of place with, with, with each one of those kicks. Lotto Press here hooks the leg. Deep cover finds two and a half. And there you see the difference too though. You see Drake Braddock bothers to hook the leg. He tightens in that pin. Where, where Zach Thomas is trying to use his weight advantage and just kind of lie on top. Swing and a miss from Thomas. Side effect from the bullet catcher. Thomas clutching the back of his head. Float over into a cover here. That was close. And to your point, Paul, each time that Drake Braddock hooks the leg, it forces his opponent to, to use the extra energy 
to kick out, to get those shoulders off the canvas. And therein, li- therein lies the difference. When you have to push a man off with all of your strength and all of your might, as opposed to just kicking a foot out of the way, that's going to wear you down. I'll tell you what, the technique on this man's suplexes is unbelievable. The intensity is off the charts. Could be all here. Again, he grabs the leg, but he does not put his full weight on Drake Braddock. And this may be the one flaw, the one chink in the armor for Zach Thomas. He's a little, well, more than a little, he's a lot hot-headed. He gets that tunnel vision. He gets so focused. Let's face it, this is not the NFL. You can land on the man with your full body weight and not draw a flag. That's a hell of a point. Wait a minute, Thomas caught him. Going for that electric chair. Wait a minute. Braddock turns Counter up. Counter up. Sunset flip, shoulders down. He got him. Wow. And just barely by inches, the boy catcher continues his momentous run at run. And your winner at 8 minutes and 54 seconds, Drake Braddock. Zach Thomas went for that patented electric chair. And Drake Braddock was able to turn that into a victory roll and come up with another win here at the Stronghold. Inner rage has led to ruin while Drake Braddock salutes this crowd here on Lamont Furnace at the Stronghold. First to the ring, hailing from Harlem, New York City, and weighing in at 127 pounds, the exalted one, London Ali. The Woody Linus, a combination of beauty and brutality, one of the most confident one of the most well-rounded athletes in any division on the Rise roster is looking for some revenge here after a controversial finish last month. That's right. Jinx's shoulders. Jinx did not have her shoulders pinned to the mat clearly after they went back and looked at the tape. And I'll tell you what, joining the main event, the Lenny Line has to become more aggressive. I think Jinx is in for it tonight. Some will disagree with you only because, as we saw in our last event, again, I emphasize, London's shoulders were clearly up when they looked back at the videotape. And I know we don't have instant replay in wrestling, but it's got to count for something. Here we go, women's action at Rise Pro Wrestling. My name is Joe Amata, joined by the legendary Mr. Paul Atlas. As we had said in the introductions here, this matchup, a result of that controversial finish during the main event and Keystone State dude core matchup the shoulders of London Ali were off the mat as you said Paul and London Ali has been none too pleased about that as you said no replay in in professional wrestling so the decision stands but the rematch is now and uh, Jinx may not be standing after one and all week, it's done with her. Oh, no, like I said, this young lady has gotten even more vicious since joining the main event. She was always a very talented athlete, but the main event has put brought out that vicious streak. A real mean streak, absolutely. Of course, Jinx 
has really taken these Rise fans by, well, look out here, beautiful tilt the world satellite head scissor. Oh, I don't think London knows where she's at right now. That, that maneuver was as much defensive as it was offensive because uh, Jinx was able to uh, get a reprieve from the Witty Lioness. Now, we saw Jinx in her Rise debut defeat Laura Lovelace, but London Ali is a completely different equation. Oh, without a doubt. Let's face it. This, this young lady was the first woman wrestler here at Rise. She took on men because there was no competition. So now she feels that these women coming in and challenging her have nothing. They can't hold a candle to the Liddy Lioness because on, she has taken on the top male stars in Rise. So what could they possibly, possibly have as far as competition for her? And did you notice how Ali just stomped in the lumbar region? We talked about that mean streak. And there's another example. You heard that. Oh, without a doubt. And, and let's make it clear. London Ali has gone on record and saying she wants to challenge for that Rise Grand Championship. She wants to be the first female Rise Grand Champion. And she has a legitimate claim. Jinx using her quickness. Lands a shot of her own here, but can she generate the momentum? Can she? She hasn't been able to get out of the blocks just yet. Don't worry about the fans, young lady. You need to stay on her. And you're seeing the unorthodox offense of the very unorthodox bloody adorable. Like I said, the chick's crazy. Shoots all we in here. Man, speaking of the lumbar region, all we just got her spine racked. Oh, that was very innovative. Just a two count there. And you, you see how all we got her shoulders off the canvas as soon as possible. What and we is all business inside those ring ropes. Oh, there's no She's very brash. Mind. She's very arrogant. But once that bell rings, she reaches a completely different gear. Oh, she, she is all business in that ring. The young lady likes to have fun. She likes her club. She likes her party. Michinoku driver. That could be in here. I got to be honest. I'm surprised Jinx uh, was able to escape there simply because she got dropped right on the back of her neck. As you were saying, Paul, my apologies. Looks quite all right. You got to call the action in the ring. You know, this, like I said, she's a very good looking young lady. She loves her party. She loves her time out. But when it comes to that ring, she is all business. She, can, she definitely has the package of beauty and grind. And she's got Jinx up. Jinx counters out of it. The momentum takes Ali into the buckles. But Jinx is worse for wear right now. Going for that Bulldog. And she hit, she it. hit it. This could, could be off. A London major Ali. upset. And I think Ali... Referee Josh Bean from his, I mean, rightly so from his vantage point, couldn't see it. I think Ali's foot may have even been on, underneath the bottom rope there. Well, the cover by Jinx was not a very good one. She kind of she kind of backdoored into that and it was a little sloppy. And and for, for Jinx, do you think that she's coming into this matchup a little apprehensive because she has something to prove? She really wants to show that she can defeat one that Ali. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, let's face it. Everybody is saying... Now, wait a minute. Feet on the ropes. Come on now. <laughs> London gets a rematch because of a botched call, and she's going to use her. She's going to use the feet on Your the rope. winner at four oh, I hate minutes to say it, it ain't cheap if you don't get caught. Three seconds. The exalted one, London Ali. Are we going to see a replay of that? There's no replays. There's no red challenge flag, Jim. I'm sorry. And and, and the witty lioness is hightailing it out of here. Oh, yeah, she's taking her drink and she's heading for the back. Actually, she's heading for the parking lot. And Jinx is upset and I can't blame her. A real sham job, a con job. Oh, I gotta say, I think this war between London and Jinx is far from over. I wouldn't doubt it. I would not doubt it if we don't see these two women in the ring again against each other very, very soon. Ladies and
a man who wants to help change your life with three simple letters. Joe Austin was obnoxious. Well, what the heck was this guy right? Man. Ladies and gentlemen, this ring is my saint, and I am Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham, and I am not only here to change each and every one of your lives, but also Lee Moriarty and Apex, if you will. So Lee, come out here and let me change your life. The first ever Rise Grand Champion, Lee Moriarty, to face Dr. And Ann now to the ring, hailing from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and weighing in at 82 kilos, the apex of combat, Lee Moriarty! One day we will be watching this young man on national and international television. But tonight, on October 6th of 2018, the Black Dragon is in the stronghold. I have said it many, many times before, and I will reiterate it again tonight. Lee Moriarty is money. And you know, I, I went to the School of Hard Knocks, University of Hard Knocks, so I never really went to college, but if that's what they're like at Yale University, holy crap. Well, certainly, Paul, this matchup here was a part of that stipulation in the ongoing rivalry between Lee Moriarty and Derek Direction. Derek Direction has uh, chosen his running buddy, Dr. Dan, to challenge Lee here. Later on tonight, you're going to see Lewis be the hand-picked choice of Lee to take on Derek Direction. The pick your poison match stipulations. That's what this is all about. And these two guys, I'm talking about Lee Moriarty and Derek Direction, have been going back and forth between Ohio and PA, attacking each other, beating down on each other, facing each other everywhere they can. And tonight, it's the pick your poison matches. You are correct, Paul. This, uh, this rivalry has spilled over state lines because uh, when Lee Moriarty, who wrestles all over the East Coast and is uh, also toward Mexico, so he has international experience as well. Lee Moriarty was at an event in the state of Ohio where Derek Direction's from, and Derek Direction, uninvited, started a uh, conflict with Lee uh, there as well. So this, this rivalry has gotten very personal between Moriarty and Derek Direction spilling outside the confines of a professional wrestling event. And this goes back to, way back to when Lee was our first grand champion and Derek Direction had the audacity to steal that title. Not beat him for that title, steal that title and take it back to Ohio with him. And one thing we know about Derek Direction, he wants to make himself famous and he may do so at the expense of Lee Moriarty. 
But when you talk, I mean, we said it during the introduction, so let's be honest here. Lee Moriarty will absolutely go on to do tremendous things in this professional wrestling business. And he doesn't want anyone to make their name at his expense. Exactly. In my near 30 years in this business, I've seen a lot of talent come and go. And Lee Moriarty is without a doubt a special talent. And I think that gets under Derek Direction's skin just a little bit. And you want to talk about talent, very unique escape from the apex of combat. And brings a round of applause from our studio audience. And one thing about Dr. Dr. Dan, uh, he's a charlatan, he's a snake oil salesman. He makes Benny Hinn look like a credible individual. I mean, hell, Dr. Dan, uh, he looks uh, shady enough to be involved in Watergate, even though he wasn't even born yet. But the oh, point, I'm sure he had something to do with it. <laughs> the point being is that underneath all of this bravado, underneath his uh, self-help sales pitch, Dr. Dan is very technically sound. I'm not going to take that away from him. He's, he's way out there. No two ways about that. The man is very eccentric. Um, but he does have a good, solid background in wrestling. And you can see there how he's trying to stretch out those quad muscles using his size and weight advantage. And in this juncture, this is a, a maneuver that's simultaneously a pinfall predicament and a submission because we has to try to keep his shoulders off the canvas here because he could technically be counted down. And not only that, with Lee Moore and his martial arts background, his legs are a big part of his offense. If you can take those away from him, look and at this. look at the beautiful ability. Advantage Moriarty. And look at that smooth transition. Moriarty grabbed the wrist. And we talked about it. You know, I'm almost speechless seeing uh, Dr. Dan trade holds with someone the caliber of Moriarty, but that shows you how well Rockingham is versed when it comes to the technical aspect of this of this sport. There's no two ways about that. The guy is goofy, but he knows what he's doing in there. Well, maybe he knows what he's doing in there. Here's a little lead in that bottom. Not quite as agile as Lee Moriarty. Shoulders down here. And uh, Nick uh, Davidson making that fiery Ricky Morton comeback. Almost suffered his first loss here at Rock. What, what am I talking about? And I believe uh, Dr. Dan may owe Nick Davidson an, an apology there. I think he does. That was cool. It was. But you need a new beginning, Lee. What are you about that championship? Nothing. How do I give you a new beginning? And here's where the mind games come into effect. But one thing you got to understand, Lee is a little sharper than most. I don't think he's going to fall for this. And the fastball. Dr. Dan tried a sales pitch. Moriarty tried to pitch into about the fourth rope. Uh, what the hell? After he's done wrestling, I think the Pirates should draft Lee. They, can need, they need all the pitchers they can get. <laughs> That's for sure. At least thinking it over, Carl. It's deep thought here. Yeah, I'm sure he's in deep thought here. Like I said, Lee's not quite as uh, dumb as Rockingham might think he is. Dr. Dan is going to try to talk it out in the middle of a physical contest. Yeah, and my money's on Moriarty in this one. You wouldn't be the first to bet on professional wrestling. <laughs> and uh, where that pamphlet was and where it ended up, uh, uh, some visuals yeah, speak for themselves. I don't think we need to go into detail. Moriarty already avoids the contact. And there's that lucha background from being touring Mexico, like you said. Absolutely. We Moriarty in 2017. Tremendous takeover using the ropes for an assist. Two feet firmly in the chest has Dr. Dan all out of sorts. And let's remember, as talented as Lee is and as, and as impressed as we are with his skills, this young man has not been in this business very long. And he is miles ahead of some veterans that I know. Dr. Dan caught him. Stiff shot. Moriarty dangling very dangerously on that apron. Up and over goes Lee. Come on. 
We suckered him in, and Hurricane Rana threw the ropes onto the concrete floor. To your point, Paul, that Wucha background in 2017, Moriarty was undefeated south of the border. He had four wins, no losses, one draw in Mexico. Undefeated international experience. And like I said, he's not Five doing this minutes minute very long. Five minutes. And he has already amassed a very impressive resume. The Black Dragon flies the stronghold, takes out Dr. Dan. And I wonder what life lesson Rockingham is going to try to uh, dig down to to see how he's going to uh, deal with the offense of the apex of combat. Thumb to the eye, that'll slow you down no matter who you are. Oh, that turned right to the sternum. And I believe Rockingham is uh, he's a little irritated that Moriarty didn't take his self-help pamphlets, his self-help system seriously. How can you? I'll tell you the truth, I think Dr. Phil is a little, uh, little bit more, more legitimate than uh, Dr. Dan, and that's not a compliment for Dr. Phil. Yeah, right. Really. Moriarty hits the buckles hard. And this will be Dr. Dan's wheelhouse. He's slowing things down, not allowing Moriarty to generate the momentum for that dynamic offense that is a trademark of our first rise grand champion. Uh, this, this is a very smart move on Dr. Dan's part. But there's Lee with one of those big, big forearms. Listen to that. I'll tell you what, he hits like a ton of bricks with those. Dr. Dan with those short shots, you can generate a lot of momentum if you know what you're doing, and clearly Dr. Dan does. Stepping in here now, what's he gonna try for? And again, Dr. Dan is gonna try to force one of his uh, self-help systems. Did he just... Is that a paper cut? I think it was. And now he just lowers a forearm into the base of the, base of the neck. This could be in here. And there's that fiery tenacity of, of Lee Moriarty. You're not going to keep this man down. He's going to fight you to the end. And you know as well as I do that Dr. Dan is on strict marching orders from Derek Direction. Soften up the Black Dragon. Get into Lee Moriarty's head. I'm sure he's not. I'm sure he's not trying for a win here. He may go for those covers, but I think a victory, a three count, is not the objective. And let's not forget, Paul, in the summer of this year, 2018, some months ago, during Stomp Out Cancer 2, Dr. Dan was on Team Cleveland and was defeated by Team Pittsburgh, which Lee Moriarty was a part of. So these two have some history. The point being, what I'm saying here is this bad blood has spilled over to other events. It's spilled over into other states. Derek Direction, Lee Moriarty, has become very personal and very bitter. Once again, trying to force his beliefs on Lee Moriarty, for lack of a better term. Moriarty finally extricates himself here. And, oh, here comes this clown again. And what's... BC Steel, wait a minute, we saw BC during our opening contest. And now he's, he's back out here. He should just, strike. just file for unemployment already, kid. Give it up. I think BC may need to consider Barber College. Look at how good he is now. I think he'd fail. It's kind of my point, Paul. I was going for the irony. And... Dr. Dan now strangling the Black Dragon in the corner. And Moriarty again hit that buckle sternum first. That may be where uh, Dr. Dan is choosing to target his offense. Well, let's face it, right behind that breastbone is your lungs. Your rib, behind your rib cage is the lungs. He's taking the wind out of Lee Moriarty. If he takes the wind out, he's going to slow him down. Certainly a method to the madness for Dr. Dan. Moriarty elevates himself. Swing and a miss from Rockingham. Misdirection. 
and a huge head kick caught Dr. Dan behind the ear and the good doctor may be out cold. Diving ace crusher, but can Lee follow up? Hooks the leg. And what a smooth transition, latching onto the arm like a pit bull. There he's going for that submission. Better watch those shoulders though. And what a physical human chess match we're seeing here. Rockingham elevates Lee. Lee looking for a way to extricate himself here. Rolls through, shoulders down. Man, what a back and forth contest. And that's what we're talking about. Dr. Dan may, may be about the sales minutes. pitch, but this guy can go inside the ring ropes. I, I hate to say this, but I'm actually impressed with his abilities inside that ring. As much of a clown as he seems to be outside the ring, he is definitely impressing me in there. Well, we, uh, we speculated on it. Derek Direction sent Dr. Dan out here on a mission to soften up the Black Dragon. And that's exactly what he's doing here. He gets hot shotted up on that top rope. Bottom drops out. This could be it for Lee. Hooks both legs. That was close. That was very close. And we've uh, we've noted the mental aspect of professional wrestling earlier. What will it do to the psyche of Lee Moriarty if he's defeated here by the chosen challenger of Derek Direction? Well, it's definitely going to place doubt in Lee's mind. Swing and a miss from Rockingham. Lee puts on the brakes. No fence. And he got caught. Rockingham dropped Moriarty right on the back of his neck. You heard the thud. North-South pin. And notice how Dr. Dan tried to put all of his weight directly on the shoulders. Exactly. That's where we that's where we, we alluded to that in some of our earlier contests tonight. If you make that man carry your body weight, he are gonna wear him down. Each and every time Lee has to kick out the full body weight of Dr. Dan. Oh, and here we go. And while we've given him credit for being a technically skilled athlete, there's nothing technical about choking your opponent. But then again, Dr. Dan is uh, not known for one uh, to uh, follow the rules. High risk, risk situation here. Both men are jockeying, buying for position. It's high risk. Moriarty hit the canvas very, very hard. And finally, Lee fights his way out of it, but can he clear the cobwebs? Lucha pass. Tilt the world into an armbar, Fujiwara. He's got it hooked. And Dr. Dan taps out. It was snap or tap for the good doctor. And you Your know winner at 14 minutes and 42 seconds, the Apex of Combat, Lee Moriarty. And the best laid plans, Jim. I don't think this is what Derek Direction had in mind when he picked Dr. Dan to face Lee Moriarty. Certainly Moriarty sending a message to the Neon Tarantino. Give credit to Dr. Dan, he's a charlatan, but the man can wrestle. However, the bottom line is this, the momentum is in the corner of the Black Dragon. The momentum is around Wee Moriarty. And I think Direction's gonna have this footage on the cutting room floor. Do not try to adjust the picture. Time limit.
Sherwe Dove has made a career of influencing impressionable minds. And with Myers and Noir, it is a match made in hell, quite frankly. Without a doubt, I'll tell you what, I have been on the receiving end of some of Shirley Doe's beatings. This man is as, as, as sadistic as they come. decimated the last time that they were in this building. But these two have tenacity, they have resiliency, and tonight, this Midwest domination is back to bring the fight to some frightening individuals. Yeah, right now they're having a lot of fun dancing around that ring. They're having a lot of fun mixing with the fans. But they better realize pretty soon the fun is going to be over because Grindhouse will grind you down if you don't take this serious. You know, Paul, as we said, the last time the Philly Marino experience was in the ring with the Grindhouse, they were decimated. But not only did they have the heart to come back here, to step back in the ring, but this time around, they have the benefit of hindsight. They know exactly what they're in for here. They know exactly how to prepare for the grindhouse. Well, let's hope they took that lesson to task and that they, uh, that they keep that in mind tonight. And, and conspicuous by his absence, let's not forget the third member of this group, the Beast Man, who we will see later on tonight in our feature double feature presentation against the grand champion, Matt Connor. Marino and Collins better realize that it's time to fight and we're going to see if the Philly Marino experience can in fact fight it out because that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to be fighting for their careers here because don't think that Shirley Doe would think twice of ending a career. Careers, they're going to be fighting for their life. Shirley Doe will end your life. That man just doesn't care. Christian Noir is a young man that has really found himself in the sadistic home of Sure We Do. And like you alluded to, this is a perfect match. The sadistic mind of Shirley Doe and the sadistic evilness of Christian Noir. They, they, you can't get two people who meld together better. Absolutely. And when it comes to preparation, clearly the Philly Marino experience have come ready and have come prepared here. We're trying to end this one quick. And that's the best way to do it. They were going to end it before it ever started because we finally have an official bell tag team action here at Rise Wrestling, courtesy of IndieWrestling.us in, in association with Sidekick Media and the Indie Wrestling Network bringing you this action. And action it is. It's spilling out on the ring, outside the ring already. And quite frank, oh man, you heard that. Quite frankly, I'm very nervous because every time the grindhouse is out here, somehow they end up near us and it makes me scared and I'm not prepared for that. Well, don't worry, I got stopped at Walmart on the way and got you a clean pair of shorts. Thanks. And Marino, did you notice, is taking it to Christian Noir. This is what they, they have to do. Again, it's it's fine to party. It's fine to have fun with the fans. But remember, when that bell rings, you got to be all business. When that bell rings, that's the dinner bell for the grindhouse. They will eat their opponents alive. And they, uh, that's literal. Christian Noir is a maniacal individual. Doe tried to take Marino's head off with the chair.
and referee Josh Main was the poor soul that uh, drew the short straw to referee this matchup. He needs to get control here. This is getting way out of hand. I don't know how you control any of these guys. And Doe is wielding a chair. Oh, that didn't work out too well. The Philly Marino experience avoided the contact, but Doe himself did not. I think the chair caught the front end of that. And you gotta give it to Marino and Collins. They're taking the fight to them, and they have to do that. The war is still down from racking his own head off that ring post. And here's the tag team continuity of the Philly Marino experience. Nicely done tandem offense from Collins and Marino. Cover here. Paul, the Philly Marino experience are two young, energetic athletes from Ohio. They've been making their name in absolute intense wrestling. They've been traveling. They've been making their bones in the world of professional wrestling. A win over someone like Shirley Doe, who has a nearly 25-year career, would certainly be a stellar addition to their resume. Oh, However, they, they may be leaving parts of their anatomy in this building. Yeah, they, they're, they, their bones may be left in the building, whether they get the win tonight or not. And Noir is a true sadistic individual. Noir has no fear and no peers. There is no one like Christian Noir. The man has no conscience. And this is what I'm talking about here. No respect for authority whatsoever. I mean, he just, he'll take the referee out. He doesn't care. If you're Christian Noir, you're, you've reached this point in your life, what do you have to lose? This is true. This is what he looks forward to. Each and every night with, with the the ability to legally hurt someone. He's got a license to kill almost literally and he takes full advantage of that. I mean, this man is from the bayou down in Louisiana and I'll tell you what, it don't get much scarier and it don't get much more sadistic than that. Marino is trying to fight his way out here. Trying to get that tag, but Tag Team 101 once again cut that ring off. That's a sadistic lesson from Shirley Doe. You keep yourself in between your, your opponent and his corner, and that's exactly what Noir did. The twisted psychological warfare that the Grindhouse employs is disturbing on several levels. Oh, without a doubt. We talked about getting in your opponent's head earlier tonight with some of our other matches, but Shirley Doe will get into your head in a way that no one has ever experienced. He won't only make you doubt yourself, he, will, he can make you defeat yourself. And Megan Myers at ringside is actually deriving pleasure from seeing this chaos inside the ring ropes. And this chick's a new level of crazy. And she fits in real well with these guys. I don't know where they found her, but man, this chick is out there. Wait a minute, Leverage maneuver from Marino. That was extremely close. But just like that, Christian, you are right back on top. And here comes this, the mind games. And once again, Shirley Doe 101. The grindhouse is, is unorthodox and as violent as the grindhouse are. Make no mistake about it. They, they have a plan each and every time as we're seeing the shrieking, sadistic Megan Myers get involved here. And I can't emphasize enough how damn creepy it is that she derives pleasure from seeing all this, this stuff. I mean, she's another a new level of crazy. I told you that. Another human being being asphyxiated is a good time for her. It's I hate to see the holidays at her house. It's disturbing. You know, and surely, though, we, we call this man crazy. We call this man sadistic. But he's a special kind of crazy. 
He knows exactly what he's doing in there. And he's passing this along to Christian Noir. As, as evil and as deceiving as Christian Noir is, Shirley Doe is giving him that special edge. He's teaching him how to use that crazy for their good. And finally, Marino makes the tag. And in comes Philly Collins, the big man, going to try to generate some offense against the grindhouse here. Elevates the war and plants him to the canvas. There's Shirley Doe once again, Tag Team 101. Makes that save. Magic bullet. Oh, but Marino kick. tattoos Doe right behind the ear. And we've got chaos here. Oh, right on his head. Marino got spiked and he could be out of it. But Marino's not the legal man. That's a good call from referee Josh Main. Philly Collins I'll is give him, I will give him credit is for the legal man. Keep yeah, I couldn't keep track of it. This looks like a car crash out on the interstate right now. There's there's bodies strewn all over the place. Collins trying to uh, rally Marino here, but can Marino clear the cobwebs long enough? Yeah, Noir was able to get out of that. Noir got out of dodge. Doe swings at Collins. And what does the Philly Marino experience have in mind here? Double stop DDT combination. This could be it. Uh. And Megan Myers gets her opinion heard. And I don't know. I think Josh Josh Main's a little too intimidated to call for the bell, and I can't blame him. What the? You had to what it exactly? Uh oh. Well, you get yourself involved, and finally, Megan Myers. Oh, look out! There goes that mist, that magic mist, or whatever he calls that. Right in the face has blind Marino. Collins gets caught low by Megan Myers. And Doe just silly head DDT to Collins. This is chaos. TKO from Noir. Got the and the, cover. the Grindhouse are going to steal this one. Part 
This goes back to the original Grand Championship tournament when Lee Moriarty defeated Derek Direction. He has had a chip on his shoulder ever since then. And he needs to leave Christie alone. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, Paul. I'll give I'll give Derek Direction the credit. He is a tremendous in-ring athlete. The guy is a slimy jerk. has really adopted Lewis as one of their own. That's not saying much about the town. Yeah, let's not go there. I'm trying to stay a baby face. <laughs> and uh, Lewis uh, sporting some, uh, some new style. I think Slick would be impressed with Lewis. I don't know what to say about that. Now earlier we saw Lee Moriarty take on the chosen challenger of Derek Direction in Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham. That was a fantastic contest and Moriarty proved the point to Derek Direction. The hired gun in Dr. Dan didn't work out too well. Moriarty was victorious. Well, it definitely did not. So now we're going to see what Lewis can do, the chosen opponent for Derek Direction by one Lee Moriarty. Yeah, certainly now... Uh, it's Derek Direction's turn to face the fire. And uh, Derek Direction would have egg all over his face if he is... Uh, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, Jim, but I think Lewis is having a seizure. No, he's doing calisthenics, Paul. He's yeah. warming up. Is that what that's called? That's um, my best guess. I've spent my fair time in the gym. I've never seen anything like that before. Uh, Lewis is certainly a very unique athlete, but he is in there with... This guy doesn't have wrestling gear. As I said, a young man that has really carved a niche for himself among the independent promotions. Derek Direction is a dynamic in-ring athlete. However, he's a slime ball. Let's be honest. You, you, you have a very valid point there, Jim. But yes, the man is a tremendous athlete as well. Uh, I've taken a few shortcuts myself over my career, so I can't say I blame him for that either. Well, the bottom line is results, and Derek Direction has amassed a truly impressive resume over the past few years. He's really taken his game to an entirely different level, and he's done it by any means necessary. And like I said before, Lewis, the Ricky Morton of Rise, this man can take a tremendous beating and still somehow dig down deep and get that victory. And you can hear the very audible pain that Direction's in. Back heel trip. And this is the technical side of Derek Direction that some may overlook because how damn obnoxious he is. But Derek Direction, believe it or not, is a protege of one Cassius Ono, a.k.a. Chris Hero, the knockout artist. Derek Direction studied extensively under Chris Hero, who is world-traveled. He traveled around the globe, and he imparted that knowledge to Derek Direction, which means two things. Number one, Derek Direction is more dangerous than he was before, and number two, clearly someone the caliber of Cassius Ono saw the potential in Derek Direction. Yes, and I was there at the beginning of his career, that being Cassius Ono, or as he was known back then, Chris Hero, 
And I can tell you what, there, he was a very technically sound athlete. So if Derek Direction learned one tenth of what he did, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Okay, so we're calling our spots now. What did you do, Lewis? Uh, Stanley Kubrick would be a little more uh, composed than Derek Direction right now, who just ate a face full of canvas. Um, we might want to go for take three at this point. And now Direction is all out of sorts. Direction's looking for a rewrite. Nice high drop kick by Lewis. Cover here, lateral press. This could prove to be one problematic thing for Lewis is trying to hold the um, ample body of uh, Derek Direction now. And there's that Cassius Ono influence rolling elbow right to the back of the neck. Uh, wedgie? That's a colon crusher, I think. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm not real sure, but I think Lewis is now a uh, soprano in the choir. I don't know if uh, James Gandolfini would approve of that, uh, that tactic. And speaking of which... Wrong Sopranos, Jim. I knew what you meant. I just, you know, he's a director. Trying to get an HBO reference. All right, we got, we, got, we got the movie reference. I'll give you that. Direction shoots him in here. Lewis hits hard. Direction using that burly weight around. And man, Direction is agile. He, he really knows how to use that weight. What a vertical leap. The Direction has that low center of gravity, and he really knows how to use it to the utmost advantage. And that's where we said again, it wasn't a great cover by Derek Direction, but again, the size differential is what could catch up to Lewis. You know, the only thing that may exceed Derek Direction's ability inside the ring ropes is just his pure arrogance, quite frankly. And what a shot! You want to talk about a knockout artist? Straight right hand. That was right on the point of the jaw. Pinpoint precision from Derek Direction. Yeah, here we go. It's a little unnecessary. I don't know what else to say. You know, I think uh, John Cazale may be a little disappointed in Derek Direction because uh, Direction's a little more than Dog Day Afternoon Goofy. This is true. I'm getting affiliated and Nick Gage loves me. What a thud! Well, I'll tell you what, Derek Direction needs to not worry about this guy in the first row and pay attention to Lewis. And that, that's, what I'm, that's what I was talking about earlier, Paul. The only thing that may exceed Derek Direction's athletic ability is that Eric... That could become a shortcoming real quick. As he's carrying on a verbal altercation with a fan at ringside, as he's carrying on a physical altercation with Lewis here. And boxing the ears, that is just nasty. He is doing his job, you moron. Now, Paul, let me ask you, I mean, I mean, as you referenced earlier, in the course of your nearly 30 years in wrestling, you have been known to uh, bend the rules occasionally. Here and there. What does that say about the mindset of an opponent when they're willing to do anything? How does Lewis really, how does he counteract that? How does he prepare for someone that's willing to take any shortcut? Sometimes you just gotta dig down yourself and uh, maybe cut a few corners on your own. I mean, if you're gonna you're gonna fight fire with fire, or you can end up on the short end of the stick, which I don't think is what Lee Moriarty had in mind when he picked Lewis as Derek's opponent. Lewis, we know, has that resiliency, and he just spiked direction right on the top of his head. And Both men down here. Here comes that underdog tenacity of Lewis, fighting to get back up. The durability of Lewis each and every month here at Rise is so impressive, very inspiring to this Rise fan base, and that's why they get behind Lewis each and every time he's inside the squared circle. Uh, it seems like they can relate to this man for some reason. And Lewis is rolling here. 
beautiful back elbow off the ropes. And the knee on Tarantino. Five minutes gone by. Five minutes. Lewis needs to get back on Derek's direction. Don't give him time to breathe. And trademark offense from Lewis. He shoots the half. Hooks the leg. Both shoulders down. Direction getting that right shoulder up. Once again, I think the size differential has come into play. And after Lee Moriarty was successful in that stellar matchup against Dr. Dan, you know that Derek Direction doesn't want to be shown up here. And, uh -oh. and that's just nasty. <laughs> Little taste of his own medicine there. Ew, don't say taste. Not in that context. Come on, Paul. Shotgun drop kick. Direction ricocheting off the buckles there. Not only do you eat the feet on a move like that, but that whiplash effect against those turnbuckles caused severe damage to the neck and shoulders. Two feet right to the pecs of direction. And we're seeing some improvised offense from Lewis. Yeah, a little too close to those ropes, though. That's knowing where you're at in that ring at all times. Once again, paying a little too much attention to the guy in the first row. Code breaker from Lewis. And the credits may roll on this match uh, very quickly. What's Lewis setting him up here for now? Going for it again. Went to the well once too often. Direction caught him and countered. Sunset bomb into the corner. And as you said, Paul, you ricochet when you hit those buckles. And a charging Meteora. And that's it. Lewis was unable to dig down and get that signature victory this time. And the win goes to Derek Direction. And your winner at 7 minutes and 33 seconds, Derek Direction! A hell of an effort from Lewis. But on IndieWrestling.us, on Smartmark Video, through Sidekick Media, Derek Direction just called Cut Scene, Forget About It, the Neon Tarantino victorious at the Stronghold. You couldn't have written a better script if you had to. Derek Direction using his smarts to outsmart Lewis and pick up the victory. And Tony Ladies Johnson and gentlemen, has the mic. Dalton Throttle was unable to make it tonight. And I was terribly upset until I heard his booting made it hot line. So if you would please in the back, let these audience members know what Dalton Throttle had to say. This guy gets a lot of phone calls. This is the main event hotline. Thanks for calling. We weren't able to get to the phone right now, but if you please leave your name, number, and a brief message, I'm sure we'll kick you in the face. Beep. Hey guys, it's Dalton. Um, I was I was on my motorcycle and you know, too much, too much. I missed the show. Um, I was really, really afraid 
of Tony Johnson and the main event. So I just held that throttle down. And then I just never let go. So I'm, I'm on my bike right now. I'm throttling. I can't stop. I'm running out of gas. I don't know what I'm going to do. But uh, I don't know your prize. I'm sorry. I'll see you next time. Don't Pick up the phone, Tony. I know you're there. Everybody knows it's just you calling into this dumbass main event hotline anyway. Listen, I don't know who you in the main event think you are doing these sneak attacks on Bearcat and on the Flannel Boys, but I am done. I'm a little bit sick of you walking around like you own Rise or something. Like, we don't all remember you used to come out to the ring wearing that nasty bear ass blanket. Oh, what? You thought we forgot about that? Check out the screenshots. Play me. Bring that little snack London, too, because I'm about done with her Kool-Aid sipping ass and ready to grab up on that dollar store weave. I don't I know thought this was a family to show. You tonight, Tony, because I'm just going to come into that ring and slap your <laughs> That was not Morse code. That was the Honey Badger. And Tony Johnson takes a hike. The fiercest phenom in professional wrestling is here, and she's going to tear the Iceman apart. is attacking Tony Johnson and I don't think this is quite what he expected from his main event hotline or whatever that sham is he calls it. I think the Badgers in heat or Johnson's got heat, one of the two. It's either way it's not good for him. How the hell do you prepare for a honey badger? You know the main event has been running rough shot over rise the past several months. We saw Keith Hot attacked after our last event here in September. He's on the sidelines. We saw Gannon Jones Jr. and Duke Davis try to take out Ty Cross. The Badger's here for revenge, and she's going to call away at the ice mat. And you know what? The main event being Gannon Jones and, and Duke Davis are not in the building tonight. So uh, Tony Johnson, he's going to have to deal with this all by himself. I don't even know if London Ali is still here or not. You remember, she got chased out of here by Jinx, and the Badger takes down Johnson. Tony Johnson's finding him a man on an island right now. And she's wailing away with fist to the skull. Blunt force trauma courtesy of the Honey Badger. And considering the mood she's in, I just want to say that I'm the biggest fan of the Honey Badger of all time. She has no reason to hurt me. Way to cover yourself. Absolutely. Oh. Okay, come on, back him up. And clearly, Johnson was not expecting Honey Badger. Neither were we, obviously. As, as polished as the main event is, there was no time to game plan for this fierce phenom. Oh, big knee right to the head of Tony Johnson. Has the Iceman all wrapped up? He gets his shoulders off the canvas, but he's all out of sorts. He looks like he's going to be uh, seeking the safety of the outside if he can clear the cobweb. Find something, I'll tell you right now. Tony Johnson was definitely not expecting this tonight, and I can't say that it's not funny to watch him get beat up. Into the lights, and quite frankly, let's be honest. I right know we're, we're impartial journalists. But the main event deserves some of this because they've, they've tried to injure and hurt their opponents. And quite frankly, this is some payback for Tony Johnson. Oh, not just their opponents. They've obviously had their eyes on a certain group of individuals. Being System Elite, being Keith Hot, being Honey Badger herself as well. So, unfortunately for Honey Badger as well, the... Um, there's not too many of her friends in the building tonight either. As a matter of fact, I think both these guys are on their own tonight. Hey, come on, no jokes, Johnson. You told me watch and by hair. hooker by crook, Johnson uh, able to tilt the momentum here. 
And he had to do something soon. The way he was getting hammered on, he just he needed to get out of that. And I'll tell you what disappoints me so damn much about this whole thing with Tony Johnson in the main event. They don't need to resort to these tactics. Tony Johnson is one of the most well-rounded, one of the most talented athletes, not just here at Rise, but anywhere around the Tri-State area. And we've really seen Tony Johnson discover himself, find himself, have a whole newfound confidence since his association with the main event. It's, a, it's, it's almost like he's finally found a home in this business. He's found a home with the main event. The combination of Gannon and Duke, Along with London Ali, it's, 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 it's like the perfect puzzle to get all fit together. And Tony Johnson has taken much, much advantage of that situation and has become a much more successful individual since joining the main event. 100%. Cover here. Hold on. Hey, feet on the ropes. That's, yeah. what I'm, that's what we're talking about. You don't need to do that. Tony Johnson is talented enough to win, to be successful. To accomplish whatever he sets his mind to without tactics like that. That's, that's very true. All four members of the main event are high, high, high class athletes, world class athletes, if you will. But I'll tell you this one way or another, we may be seeing the best Tony Johnson we've ever seen because, as we've said, he's really come into his own, he's found himself, and he's taken his game to an entirely different level. And I have first-hand experience with that. Tony Johnson and I did go to war at one point, and he has gotten even more sadistic since that time. So let me ask you this. How do you compare the Tony Johnson of a few years ago to the Tony Johnson in the ring right now? You have first-hand experience. Well, I'll tell you, like I said, he's become a lot more a lot more methodical, a lot more sadistic since then. Back then, when Tony and I fought each other, he definitely had a mean streak in him, but it's gotten even more prominent since he's joined the main event. This is a whole new level for Tony Johnson. I'm just trying to hold the Badger down and by the same token forcing the Badger to expend the energy to escape as she just barely gets the shoulder up. And let's face it, the, fer the feral female is not an individual who's easy to hold down. To your point earlier, Paul, Maybe the, the, the biggest contrast in Tony Johnson is he's found his confidence. Two, I, I, in, I have to agree with in you. In 2018, Tony Johnson finally realized he can be as good as he wants to be. He has that natural ability. And I think a lot of that comes from hanging with the main event. Again, Duke and Gannon, world-class athletes. Duke, as I've said before, Duke Davis, an elite member of Robert Morris' football team. Gannon Jones Jr., world-class athlete. Tony Johnson is now stepping into that same role. And again, we're seeing him try to use the ropes here. Referee Josh Main has an indication that the ropes were used because you can see the rope moving, obviously. But Josh Main can't call what he doesn't see. No, he cannot. And again, Tony Johnson trying to brush that off as there's a wind in this building right now. And Johnson, so meticulous, the way he's going to pick apart. He's going for that ankle. The honey badger. Oh, and I thought he was going for that ankle lock there. That's exactly what we saw him take out uh, the Bearcat with. Come on, badger. Which reminds me to let everyone know, if you're watching us here on IndieWrestling.us, if you're watching us through SmartMark Video, make sure you look up Rise Wrestling on Facebook because all of our uh, post-show videos, all of our post-event matches, all those things, all that information will be available through social media as well. You want to stay up to date to everything that happens here at Rise. And even an old guy like me can work it, so it's not that hard to do. Hey, you're not that old. I, mean, I know your first match uh, was you and Brian Anthony against uh, Moses and Jesus. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I had the woolly mammoth trunks, but yeah, I digress. Charging through, and the Badger... She is such a unique athlete, such a unique commodity is the honey bat. Oh yeah, it's very hard to prepare for someone like her because she doesn't know what she's gonna do next. How can you know what she's gonna do? Series of knee strikes to the temple. Well, that was a little unhygienic, but it was well, damn sure effective. That's, that's very true. Roll up, schoolgirl. And once again, oh. as the as the tide shifts, Johnson is all out of sorts. Yes, he is. He, he seems to be wanting to take some kind of a timeout or uh, 
I don't know, call no joy here. I don't know what he's doing. Johnson seeking the solace of the outside, but I don't know how long a reprieve he's going to get. And Badger's tracking the Iceman. And she's got him by the hair. And you want to talk about Vicious, she's twisting and contouring the head of Johnson to get him back in the ring. Iceman using the leverage, using his height to, to bury that shoulder into the midsection. Catches that leg. He went for that kick, but she caught it. Beautiful wow. Saito side suplex. And that shows you the strength of Badger. Using her low center of gravity to her advantage, just muscling the Iceman over. Dropped him right on the back of his head. And the Badger is feeling it. Big series of axe handles putting Tony Johnson flat on his back. Right to the heart. There she goes for that Stunner. spinner. She hit it. That's a, that's a Badger trademark. And Tony Johnson is out on his feet. One more time. It looks like she's going for it. Telegraphed it there. Oh. And what a kick right underneath the jaw. Badger may be unconscious. I can't beat her. The match is over. He's, he, he's done. Whoa, wait a minute. And he's going to try to break the ankle of the Badger. And Edric Everhart has made his way out here. He wasn't scheduled to be here. But he is here. And I tell you what, I think he's had enough of his friends taking, taking guff from the main event. Edric Everhart doing the right thing was not going to allow the Iceman to assault the Badger. And I tell you what. Usually, uh, Eric Edra Everhart is always all upbeat, always happy, dancing around the arena. This man is business right now. I have never seen this man with that look on his face before. Edric is incensed. And the Iceman's heading for higher ground. The Iceman's getting out of here. Everhart is laying down the challenge to the main event. He is the last man standing, apparently. And all of a sudden, Johnson, Johnson doesn't want to fight when someone's on their feet. But this war is far from over. He needs some play. Now, I am officially laying down my gavel. No. I will not be able to wrestle anymore. And uh, when I came to Pittsburgh, Kay is at the desk. What is here. that? Are you kidding me?
now for our first featured presentation of the evening. This match is a lumberjack match. Scheduled for one fall, no time limit, no DQ. David Wallace. And this has been building for months upon months. responsible for Rise. Brandon K is the reason we all have employment in the wrestling business and David Wallace wanted to take that away from us all and most importantly wanted to take that away from Brandon K. What this idiot doesn't realize is there would be no David Wallace if it wasn't Brandon K. combustible elements all over this building. You can feel the tension at the stronghold. This has the potential to become a gang fight at any moment. Wait a minute, Brandon came through the side door. Brandon little trick he learned from me. And Lois doesn't see him. And we are officially underway. Eight months of animosity comes to a head here tonight, October 6th, at the Stronghold. Brandon Kay has waited a long time to get his hands on David Lawless, and tonight he gets that opportunity. And let's not forget, David Wallace put together a phony retirement claiming he was too injured to continue his career. He suckered Brandon in and tried to end Brandon's career. And um, I don't want to say much, uh, but I'm not really sure that um, Brandon... Oh, well, that explains a lot. Yeah, Wallace's favorite maneuver was that low blow. So Brandon K came prepared with that metal cup. And he got a face full of cup. That's one way to say it. 
And there's that Lumberjack stipulation coming into play. Wallace has nowhere to run. As Brandon K takes eight months of animosity out on the gap. And quite frankly, I'm gonna say, you don't get any lower than faking an injury the way that Wallace did. That is true. I mean, I've done a lot of devious things in my career, but I never, never faked an injury to try to get the upper hand on somebody. Not just on somebody, but on my trainers. I would never have done what Wallace has done to Brandon K to Dominic Benucci. We We've seen athletes that hate each other. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to the competition inside the ring ropes, nobody tries to end a career. That's exactly what David Wallace tried to do to Brandon Kent. Like I said, what Lawless doesn't realize is there would be no David Lawless had Brandon Kay not taken him into his school and taught him the business of professional wrestling. So to do what he done, that's the ultimate betrayal. That's the ultimate in despicableness, if that's even a word. Tremendous agility from Brandon Kay into a pinfall. Brandon Kay is an 18-year pro. Brandon K has continued to make his mark on this industry in this area for two decades. David Wallace wanted to try to take that away because Wallace felt like he didn't get enough attention from Brandon K. What's, what's Wallace? Four years old? He needs a lollipop. And that's the ego of David Wallace. Wallace wants to be the one to put Brandon K down. Wallace wants to be the one to use Brandon K as a stepping stone. Wallace wants everyone talking about the gavel after this event is over. And you can see Wallace immediately like a shark targeting that injured arm. Uh, let's face it, everybody knows Brandon Kay is one of the greatest guys in this business. He'd give you the shirt off his back. If Wallace wanted a chance to prove himself, all he had to do was go to Brandon Kay and ask for a match. He did not have to go about it the way he did. You know, Brandon at one point in his career wanted to see what he really had, and he asked me for the match, and we had the match. And it was a quality, quality match by both of us, and Brandon learned whether or not he had what it took. That's how you handle it, not the way David Lawless did. And once again, latching onto the arm like a pit bull, twisting and contorting the arm. And I, I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm aware that Brandon K had to wear the. Uh, the, the, ne the neoprene sleeve to protect that that elbow, but he may have inadvertently put a target on that arm. Lateral press from Wallace, but that's the trademark tenacity from Brandon K. The tenacity that he's shown for nearly two decades. Brandon K is not going to lay down at any aspect. He is going to fight you to the bitter end. David Lawless thinks this is going to be an easy contest. I hope he packed a lunch. And, it, and at the end of the night, this is all about the ego of David Lawless. He, oh, there's no two ways about it. He wants the entire Pittsburgh wrestling world to talk about the gap. He's a liar. He's a charlatan. He's an ambulance chaser. He loves to be the center of attention. This guy goes to a funeral and he's mad he's not the corpse. Step up Rana from Wallace. And no one ever said that the guy can't wrestle. For everything that I've said out here, which I stand behind about cover here, about David Wallace, I will never sell him short on ability, ever. But he is a, a despicable human being, and I'm sorry I'm going to try to 
try to contain myself here, but I cannot stand this guy. Well, again, like I said, if he wanted to prove what he was made of, all he had to do was ask Brandon for the match. Brandon would have given it to him. But to go about it this way, to go about it the way he did it, not only trying to take Brandon out, but trying to take out all the other students that he claimed got more attention than he did. This little two-year-old went about it completely wrong. And let's not forget this selfish bastard ruined our feature presentation last month when he, when he interjected himself in that classic between Gory and Connor. That's it. We had a no contest as a result of that. We'll never know now, at this point at least, which one of the Headless Horsemen truly is the best champion. And again, because he needed to be the center of attention. And now this is getting a little uncomfortable, i got to be honest with you. Because, and I'm going to tell you what, Paul, this isn't wrestling hyperbole, and I'm not saying this because Brandon K started rocks. Lateral press... K kicks out, but for how long? I'm going to say it here, and again, I can't stress enough, this is not wrestling hyperbole. I respect I respect Brandon K as much as anybody that I've ever met in independent professional wrestling. He is a solid human being, and it's a damn travesty that David Wallace is trying to ruin the tremendous promotion that Brandon K has started here. Well, I have to agree with you 100%, Jim. Dr. Dan getting involved, which is not his job as a lumberjack. But everyone's on edge during our first half of a feature presentation. Well, this thing is definitely a powder kit. It could explode at any moment. And Brandon took out everybody. And when it came to proving himself against his, his fellow students, Wallace took every shortcut in the book. But he's willing to take a chance because Wallace knows it's put up or shut up. Uh, with, with the way he's handled himself in this whole thing, he comes up short tonight. There's no coming back for David Wallace. So, yes, he is he going to pull out all the stops? Yes, he will. Should he pull out all the stops? He probably should. Will, do I think he's going to make it through this match? I doubt it. And here's a little known fact. Paul, do you know how... Brandon Kay was able to coerce David Wallace into signing this contract. I'll tell you, David Wallace demanded that if he was victorious here against Brandon Kay, that he would get a future grand championship shot. That is how Brandon Kay had to coerce David Wallace into signing a contract. Because David Wallace is a selfish SOB that needed another incentive to put his name on the dotted line. Because Especially he started this whole mess. Absolutely, and when and when Wallace found out that Brandon K didn't need shoulder surgery, all of a sudden Wallace was a little hesitant to put his name on the contract. But let's but, but, but let's just say it: Brandon K has a lot more miles on his body than the gap. That's true. That's true. But Brandon keeps himself in tremendous shape no matter whether he's competing in the ring or not. As always, innovative offense from first class, Brandon K. running knee strike, caught the gavel right in the face. You think at this point, Lawless is starting to second guess his whole theory here? Northern Lights. Beautiful bridge. Shoulders were down. That was close. Very close, Jim. And Paul, I hope you don't mind me putting it on record. You and I have talked you know, privately about this. I, I understand that you're very upset about all this, and I can appreciate the fact that you're calling this matchup as, a, as objectively as possible. But believe me when I tell you, nice neck breaker off the ropes. The gavel has the shoulders down here. Brandon escapes, but again, looks very weary. As I was saying, just for the fans, I mean, I'm not trying to reveal our personal conversations, but you told me privately that you can't stand David Wallace. I cannot. I hate the man. You know what? If this guy was on fire, I wouldn't urinate him on him to put it out. 
So for anyone watching us here on IndieWrestling.us, that is the kind of uh, animosity that everyone else affiliated with this promotion has for David Wallace. Wallace wants to be the center of attention. Well, he's going to stand alone here at Rise. Brandon, the time-tested veteran, putting on the brakes. Headbutt to the collarbone, sends the gavel sailing to the canvas. Brandon perched up top. Big diving headbutt. Well, that took a little bit out of K, too. Hooks both legs. Man. The gavel got that right shoulder. Yeah, and I'm not going to deny that the gavel is not a great competitor, because he is. He has an impressive resume himself. It's the way he went about this whole thing that's the problem. He's insufferable. He's a selfish bastard, and quite frankly, I hope that Brandon K kicks his head off right here. And now the Lumberjacks getting involved. Tony Johnson hooking the ankle. Wait a minute now. And the gavels tosses the chair aside. Something's up here. Well, maybe Wallace really does want to prove something. It's put up or shut up time, and this may be the time that Wallace finally wants to prove himself to Brandon K. I don't know if I trust that. That's a version of the K drive. Could Wallace put Brandon down with his own move? No, he will not. Not just yet. And I'm not going to lie to you, these kickouts are getting shorter and shorter each time. It's taking Brandon longer and longer to get out of these pins. Certainly, Brandon has sustained a lot of punishment. And Gina, who was in the same training class as David Wallace, is pleading for the gavel not to do this. And once again, Wallace is looking... Wait a minute, Lee Moriarty's not going to allow this to happen. What well, is no disqualification? And Moriarty, I can't play him. I can't either. I'll tell you what, it's everything I can do to sit in this position and watch this and not get involved myself. And Gina just handed Brandon a chair. Wallace is getting mugged by his fellow students. Because, you know, they, they all have a hatred for Wallace. Well, they all des they, he deserves it. And wait a minute. Brandon does not want anybody to get involved here. Brandon wants to do this himself. I can't say that I blame him. Kay wants to prove once and for all that Wallace is the piece of garbage that he is. Wait a minute, Johnson measuring K, and Brandon doesn't see him. That big kick to the jaw, Brandon. I can appreciate the fact that Brandon wants to, to do this right. But unfortunately, the odds are not in his favor if everyone else is going to get involved. Yeah, the road to ruin was paved with good intentions. Well, wait a minute, what's, what's Wallace doing here? Wallace wants to do this himself. All right, I'll give him a little bit of credit for that. Wallace wants this done one-on-one. -on -one. This really is about proving a point for David Wallace. All right, I'll give him a little bit. Like I said, I will give him a little bit of credit for that. At least, at least he's trying to be a man about it. Well, this is just erupting. This is becoming... We talked about how combustible things are. This, is, this has become a complete fight between everybody. Let's face it, this thing has put tension on, on high alert for the last eight months here in Rise. We knew that something like this could happen at we any time. We can feel the tension in the building right now as Lee takes out the Iceman. And there's Derek Direction. We know his issues with Lee run deep. It's no surprise that Direction waited for a cheap shot. Direction just got suplexed on the floor. That'll learn him. And in the ring, we still have Brandon K and David Wallace. This is turning. This is turning into a complete melee.
direction and leaves just fought out to the concession stand while we've got dueling chairs in the squared circle. The violence and the physicality continues to escalate. This place looks like a war zone at this point, Jim. You got bodies laying everywhere, you got chairs laying everywhere, lights are getting knocked over. So far for you, the only good point is they haven't come up here. Please don't give them any ideas. Now, wh whoa, Brandon and they just locked eyes and an embrace, so we finally, maybe this has gone too far. Maybe this has gone too far. I don't know if I trust Lawless, Brandon. I wouldn't trust him. Maybe Wallace is trying to finally prove a point, one on one. I haven't seen Wallace that emotional in, I mean, ever. Usually he's ultra confident. K-Driver, Wallace counters. Oh, and there's the, no, Brandon blocked the low blow. Yeah, so much for trying to prove a point. Yeah. Wallace went right back you. to it. I told you not to trust the snake. That snake in the grass. Oh yeah, now he's sorry. And I hope Brandon breaks the damn hand of David right. Wallace. I hope that's the hand he writes his summations with. Brandon frustrated, and there's the low blow, but it's no disqualification. So unfortunately, that counts. There's nothing referee Nick Davidson can do about it. The gavel hits the crossroads, and don't tell me Wallace is going to win it like this. Damn it. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Your winner at 18 minutes and 2 seconds, the gavel. This despicable piece of human garbage actually won this match. And I, for one, am sickened by it. Wallace is a lying, selfish scumbag. And damn it, he's going to get a shot at the Grand Championship. I believe that was the plan all along. He took advantage. Yeah, don't look at me. Yeah, you might want to keep You're walking. A You're a you might want to keep walking. You might want to keep walking, pal. And I feel you better get to his car before I do. <laughs> I feel terrible for Brandon. Kidd. We have the second half of our double feature coming up next. Rise Wrestling through IndieWrestling.us.
feature presentation of the evening. The winner of this match will be crowned Rise Grand Champion. This match is scheduled for a one fall with a 30 minute time limit. <laughs> Challenge for the Grand Championship. The Grand Champion, Matt Connor. Next to the ring, hailing from Derry, Maine, and weighing in at 215 pounds, your Rise Grand Champion, the Reaper. Grand champion Matt Connard in this, I have to believe, will be his toughest test to date. The unorthodox beastman. The hardest working man in Pittsburgh professional wrestling puts his rise grand championship on the line against an absolute Neanderthal, a mammoth. And let's not forget the influence of Shirley Doe on this man. Shirley Doe seems to be the only person who can control the beast man. Absolutely. From Romero's worst nightmare, Doe is here to guide the monster. We talked about it earlier tonight. Doe thrives on taking impressionable minds and molding them for his own purposes. There is no greater power in Rise than the Grand Championship. When you talk about minds, I have to wonder if there even is a mind or a brain in that head at all, the Beastman. Violence personified is the Beastman. Connor knows he has to start out quick here. He's got to do what he can to take this big guy off his feet, that's for sure. Connor will have to use that quickness. I don't know if this guy can even feel pain. And that is just physical oh, domination. That's going to stop your heart. Of course here, Paul, not only are we watching this championship matchup through IndieWrestling.us, don't forget to subscribe to the Indie Wrestling Network, just $5.99 a month, all the Rise events, a lot of other special features available through that streaming service in association with Sidekick Media. And it's an awesome service at that, if you're not watching this on, on, those, on that outlet, you are missing out on a lot. Some of the best platforms in independent wrestling coming to us through Sidekick Media. And the Beast Man is now asserting his game. 
That's just a game of sheer power. There's no there's no technicality. Yeah, no finesse, guy. all impact is the beast man, no question about it. You're not gonna catch this guy using arm bars, that's for sure. Leverage maneuver from Connor. And just in the opening moments of this matchup, you can see that the champion is fighting with a sense of urgency. And when you're in there with the beast man, you certainly have to. Yeah, low bridge by Shirley Doe. You can never count him out. And Connor took his eye off the ball when he got run over. And see, this is what makes Beast Man dangerous. He may not be able to think for himself, but Shirley Doe does the thinking for him. He, he gave the Beast Man that opening. And I believe the Beast Man is now gnawing on the flesh of Matt Connor. It's like snack time to him right now. Come on, referee, you gotta get that bone off of him. I think referee Josh Main is probably a little intimidated of the beast man, and I don't blame him. Yeah, but he's still gotta be the authority in there. And of course, they're fighting near us, and uh, if you don't hear anything, it's because I, I, I left. <laughs> the Beast uh, Man is too... You, they're on their way back down. The Beast Man is too damn dangerous. And if you don't believe me, look at all the welts forming on the body of the Rise Grand Champion. Connor's chest is just expanded by about two inches from those vicious chops. Connor just crumbled to the concrete. And I don't want to sell Connor short. As I said, he is the workhorse of Rise, one of the hardest working athletes in Pittsburgh wrestling. We may be well on our way to seeing a new grand champion because he is being physically dominated right now. And that's the difference. Connor is an athlete. Connor is a pure wrestler. And the beast man, he's just that, a beast. There's no, again, there's no technicality to his game. It's just pure violence. Mafia kick to the face, and again, it's it's really an act of desperation. Connor is trying to scratch and claw just to survive these odds. He's gonna have to chop this big man down if he wants to retain his grand championship here tonight. And there you see the power, the power differential right there. Finally gets the beast man off the ropes, but he got absolutely clobbered with that clothesline. Yeah, dare I say it, Jim, but I have to say at this particular point of the match, Matt Connor is being dominated. Jesus. <laughs> and I'm not trying to sell Connor short by any means. No, but this is the harsh reality of a 350 pound monster. Connor might be completely out on his feet at this point. Connor trying to use the ropes to get back up to a vertical base. Well, unfortunately, that just is another opening for Beastman as he chokes him across that cable. Just wrenching on the neck of the Reaper. And there's the Shirley Doe factor again. Yeah, he is. He's very smart as he points to his large cranium. You know, Doe makes Manson look mild-mannered. <laughs> you ain't lying there. I'd have sooner spend an evening at that compound than Shirley Doe's. And the challenger driving all the air out of Connor. Not only is that going to make it hard for Connor to breathe, but at this point he could crack a rib. Come on, out of the corner. We saw the beast man use his own head as a battery ram. And just look at the impact alone against the, that turnbuckle, just taking more and more energy out of Matt Connor. It's a slow count. I don't know, you heard that. Connor is in real jeopardy right here. And more specifically, the rise 
Grand Championship is in real jeopardy right here. Oh, there's no two ways about it. Again, Connor's only been a champion for a short time, but I have never, ever seen him dominated in this way. And it's, a boot right to the jaw. It's going to take every last ounce of effort in Connor, and maybe more, to get out of this with the Grand Championship. That's it. We got a new champ. No, Connor gets that right shoulder up, and quite frankly, I'm shocked. Uh, you and me both, Jim. I can't believe he kicked out of that. And as the Beast Man squeezes and constricts. And not only is he squeezing tightly around the, the jugular of, of Connor, he's also making him carry that large 350-plus pound frame as he's doing so. So not only is he cutting off the blood supply, but he's cutting off the oxygen. This, this goes without saying. What we're seeing right here is the toughest test of Connard's 10 years champion. I would have to say if he gets out of this with the grand championship intact, there may not be another man who can take that belt from Connard. Blunt force trauma courtesy of the beast man. I don't know what language Doe is uh, communicating with the beast man in, but I'm assuming that Sorg and our friends at Sidekick Media can subtitle that for us. Can we Google Translate that? Connor's, Connor's out on his feet here. I, I, I think he's his body is limp. I went driver, and Connor's neck was compressed. That was nasty. The way that his head snapped down onto that mat, I, I, I'll be shocked if his neck isn't broken. It's that good. The Reaper has risen! I am in shock. I can't where? believe this, and neither can the Beast Man. Where, where did that come from? I thought Connor would be going to a hospital, but he's going after the Beast Man. Connor firing up now with those big forearms. Jumping in Zaguri. I can't believe this. He, the big man's still on his feet, though. He's yet to take him down. I am absolutely stunned. Connor avoided the contact. The champion of the second rope. Now the big man's off his feet. And Connor's firing up now. You want to you wanna talk about the heart of a champion? This is it right here. Connor's digging way, way down for this. He's got a sleeper locked in. Beastman again using his weight to his advantage. Connor boxed in the corner. Oh, he missed with the big bowling ball. A miscue leaves the Beastman vulnerable for the first time in this matchup. And Christian Noir is making his way down the ring. You had to expect this from Grindhouse. You knew this was not going to stay a straight up fight the whole time. Now Doe trying to distract Connor. I don't think Connor sees Noir. Springboard. He just launched the champion. A violent toss puts Connor on the canvas yet again. And this time he hits the cannonball. Again, that head snapping back into that turnbuckle area. That whiplash effect doing more and more damage to the neck of Mac. Lateral press! Oh, I thought that had to be it. And we were merely inches away from a new champion. It could be simply a matter of time before the Beast Man leaves this building as the third grand champion. I, I, I'd almost have to call it that because I just don't see where Matt Connor is going to be able to dig down and get out of this now. He's taken so much punishment in this match, I don't know if Matt can do it. Caught him in a crucifix. He's trying to get the big man over. Connor. 
thankfully saw it coming. That would have definitely been not only the end of Connors' championship reign, but possibly his life. The Beast Man got out at one. And now Connors going to have to fight the entire grindhouse. That's what this is coming down to. We knew Ten at some point this was going to happen. Ten we just minutes. knew it, that it was not going to stay a fair fight for long. Bicycle kick and like a bowling ball once again. He the just, Beast Man takes out everybody. He just picked up the 7-10 split on that one. The Reaper will not relinquish no, the championship. You know, Connor could have easily taken the count out victory there, but he does not want to retain the championship that way. He wants a clear cut victory. Connor pours his heart and his soul into each and every grand championship matchup. When Matt Connor is in the featured presentation, you know you will get everything he has. Well, and I'm the not Beast sure the Man, ring post didn't lose that battle. The, the Beast Man just took all of the ring post. I'm not sure, but from here it looks like he bent it with that head. Look at Connor trying to get him back into the ring. Again, he could have rolled into the ring and taken the count out victory, but Matt Connor does not want to retain the championship that way. A true champion is the Reaper, Matt Conn. You have to give credit where credit is due. Matt Connor wants to defend that championship, and he wants victories, clear-cut victories. Not count-outs, but pinfalls or submissions. Beastman puts on the brakes. Connor trying to chop down. Swing and a miss. Huge knockdown. This has to be it. Huge collision. Wow, that was literally, literally millimeters away from a new grand champion. Connor is prone on the canvas. What's the beast man calling for here? He's pointing to that turn. He's not going to do. He's going up. I didn't think I would see Connor kick out after he got dropped on his head. And I sure as hell didn't think I'd see the beast man climb the turnbuckles. Big man's gonna fly. Bicycle kick. Right to the jaw. And another one. And finally, the Neanderthal is off of his feet. But not for long. You notice he's right back up. Connor with the, the DDT, the reverse DDT. He, he got, got him. him. He got him. Matt Connor retains the grand championship and he earned every bell. But there you go with that silly head DDT. And now here goes Grindhouse like a pack of dogs. The Grindhouse looking to cause chaos before we go off the air here. They're trying to end the career of Matt Connor right here. Look out. Here comes Lee Moriarty. Moriarty. Big chair shot to Shirley Dove. May have saved the life of the champion. <laughs> Lee Moriarty, a house of fire proverbial out here. In the, whoa, they're heading out towards the parking lot. But that still leaves Matt Connard in there with Christian Noir. And the Beast Man is starting to get back to his feet. The Grindhouse may be possessed and obsessed with unseating the Reaper. Could we be oh, seeing... Oh, wait, right. This is what we did now. This piece of garbage now coming to the ring. Sure, pick the bones clean. And now it all makes sense. David Wallace, who secured himself a title shot by defeating Brandon K, is conveniently at ringside after Connor's been mugged. Yeah, once again... Once again, after the damage is done, he's going to walk into the ring.
Your new grand champion right here. <laughs> and could this be a deranged prophecy? Paul, we're out of time for Paul Atlas. My name's Jim Amata. IndieWrestling.us, Sidekick Media, and Smartmark Video. We'll see you back here at the Stronghold November 17th. This is Rise Wrestling. Could always be our next grand champion. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com.